Hello everyone and welcome back to Milo Farms. Have a second irrigation video today. This is more so regarding irrigation for the lawn and things like that, not as much the pasture as we talked about in the prior video. So we have a setup here that I put together last year. I mean it worked for the entire season last year and so far has worked well getting everything started again this year. What I'm going to show here today is what I did, not saying it's the right way to do it or the only way to do it, but with what I was able to find pieces and parts, this was the cheapest and so far the most durable way to do it. I definitely am not an electrician by any stretch, and anything that you see here is to be done at your own risk. But I will say it has worked. Can't say if it meets codes or not meets codes, but it does work and it's been very successful. So we have another pump just like the pump that. Uh, we had on the pasture. This is the same exact model of pump. This is just a newer one. Has the foot valve down in the ditch down below that sucks the water up into the pump. And then on the outlet side we have a gauge that will show the pressure. We have a valve if you needed to isolate it and specifically the valves used for time when it's time to blow it out at the end of the year. So right here is the port that you can hook the air on to blow out the sprinkler system. And when you do that, you close the blue valve to blow the air into the sprinkler system. And it leads down to a valve box here with three valves in it. There's three settings on this system. And what we're really gonna focus on is the controls for this. The problem that we had is this is a very long run out to the pump and it only has one wire run to it and that's a 240 volt AC wire. It's a piece of uh, a 12-2 buried wire. The issue that we had is there was no means to run a pump start relay and to run a sprinkler control off of that wire being that it's the wrong voltage. I looked into ordering a sprinkler control from Europe that would be a higher voltage that would work on this but the complexity of trying to deal with that was just not worth it. So I'll show you what I designed here. So to start with, we have down here at the bottom, this conduit has the power coming in. The power comes in and goes to a transformer. And this transformer I ordered off of Amazon it uh, is one that's designed to go in a home heating and cooling system. It converts the 240 volt AC to 24 volts AC. And that is the voltage that the pump start relay needs to work and the voltage that the sprinkler clock needs to work. Then I also have the wires, the supply wires, in addition to attaching to the transformer, go up and attach to the pump start relay that is right here in the top. And the sun's kind of hard to see but where those larger wires go straight in, that is the pump start relay. And the one I found that was just cheapest was actually made by Orbit, and I bought it at Lowe's, um, yanked the relay out of the box, threw the box away, and I installed the relay in here. So coming off the transformer, I have the 24 volts AC going out of the transformer and then up into this conduit, up into my sprinkler clock. This sprinkler clock originally had a built-in transformer that would have converted 120 AC into the 24 volts that were required for this. So what I did is I cut out that transformer that was in there, attached it to the wires here coming from my transformer down below, which supplies the timer with the same voltage that it needed originally. Then, down here on the bottom, you can see all the connections. The sun's a little bright, it's kind of hard to tell there. But you've got the common, which is the common amongst all of the parts, or all of the valves and the relay for the pump start. Then you have the pump wire, which goes down to the relay. And then you have the wires going to all three sprinkler valves, setting one, two, and three. Again, the common is shared between all of them. And then you have the common going to the other side for the pump start, and the common also goes down 
to valves one, two, and three. So the beauty of having this all connected as one unit is the sprinkler clock controls both the pump and all the valves at the same time. So when it's time for the water to come on, the pump start relay starts the pump and then turns the valve on for the appropriate sprinkler. So for example, I'll demonstrate. We are going to run setting number three and we're gonna tell it to run for five minutes. You'll hear the pump kick on. And then shortly after that, the sprinklers will come on. And then as soon as you tell the system to stop, everything shuts off. It's all connected as one. So again, this is just an example of what we did, and it's an idea somebody can try if they'd like to. Again, I'm not an electrician and can't say if this meets code or anything like that. This has to be done at your own risk. But this is what I did and it works great. I'll put a link in the description to the items that I used here for the relay and for the transformer and as well for the sprinkler clock. So you can take a look at that if you'd like to. So coming up next week, we're going to be getting our bees. We're going to install three packages of, of bees. We're going to try to get some up-close videos of the installation as well as an overall video of it from kind of a distance so you can see the whole picture. So hopefully everybody can tune into that. Please like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you next time here at Milo Farms.